Hi, welcome to module 6. In this part of the lecture, we will have a comparative review on the morphology of the heart and identify the differences in the branching of the major arteries among domestic animals. At the end of this presentation, each student should be able to compare the morphology of the heart of the different domestic animals, identify the variation in the branching of major arteries, and review the major arterial and venous system. The cardiovascular system is composed of the heart and all the vessels that serve as highway for the transport of blood. The arteries carry oxygenated blood except for the pulmonary artery, and the veins carry unoxygenated blood except for the pulmonary veins. The heart served as the pump contracting rhythmically to bring appropriate pressure and maintain the flow of the blood. In general, the morphology of the heart among domestic animals are the same. Both mammals and birds have heart with four chambers and performs the same function. The heart is located within the mediastinum with around 60% lying to the left of the median plane as shown here. Variation is obvious in the size as larger animals need a larger heart to compensate the demand for higher pumping pressure. Most of the gross modifications are seen at the branching of the arterial system, especially the larger vessels close to the heart. In this module, we will identify the distinguishing characteristics of the heart of a particular animal and will compare the branching of the major blood vessels. Let us first study the heart of a dog. It is generally described to be ovoid in shape and roughly contributes about 0.7% of the body weight of the dog. In contrast to other animals, the heart of a dog has a blunt apex. In a clinical point of view, it is clearly important to know the relationship of the parts of the heart to the external landmarks. In dogs, the heart extends from the third to the seventh rib. Please note that different references may show different information, but variation may also exist depending on the breed of the dog. The heart of a cat is comparatively smaller than in dogs. It is ovoid with a blunt to slightly pointed apex as shown here. The heart is located between the 3rd or 4th ribs and 6th or 7th ribs. The heart of large ruminants is constructed according to the general mammalian plan and exhibits no distinctive structural features of importance. However, it is relatively fatty compared with other species. Here, we have an image of a heart of a Philippine carabao. Please note the fatty tissues at the base of the heart. The heart extends from the second intercostal space or the third rib to the fifth intercostal space. Here is the second intercostal space and here is the fifth intercostal space. Take note that the landmark can be the intercostal space or the rib itself. In addition, the heart of large ruminant has a structure called os cordis. For us to locate the said bone, here is a longitudinal section of a bovine heart. Here is the interarterial septum, and here is the interventricular septum. The os cordis is located near the junction of the interarterial and interventricular septa. Here is a cross section for you to imagine further the location. And here are the os cordis. When removed, here is the os cordis. The cardiac skeleton provides rigidity to prevent dilatation of valves and outflow tracts. Although these bones occur most commonly in cattle, they are not confined to this species and may be found in other domestic animals like old horses. For small ruminants like goat and sheep, the heart is like in the dog but with a more pointed apex. Here is a heart of a goat and a heart of a sheep. The heart can be located between the third and sixth rib. The heart of a horse is like a laterally compressed cone. It lies in the ventral part of the middle mediastinum, directly cranial to the diaphragm. Most commonly, the heart extends between the planes of the second to the sixth intercostal spaces, which places the apex directly caudal to the level of the point of the elbow. There is a significant variation in the sizes of the heart of horses 
as those trained for exercises have bigger heart compared to non-exercising horse. The heart of a pig is relatively small, providing as little as 0.3% of the pig's total body weight. It occupies the ventral half of the thoracic cavity, extending between the second and the fifth ribs as shown here. Interestingly, in an old anatomy book, the heart of a pig is uniquely described to have a double apex. For birds, the heart is also four-chambered like in mammals. It is conical with the apex formed solely by the left ventricle, same with the other domestic animals. The dorsal and the lateral aspects of the heart lie in contact with the liver, while the other surfaces are surrounded by the respiratory elements and the air sacs. The right atrium receives the caudal vena cava and a pair of cranial vena cava. The left atrium receives oxygenated blood via a single common pulmonary vein. The ventricles are similar to those of the mammalian hearts. Now let us compare the variation in the branching observed in the coronary arteries. As I recall, the coronary arteries are the main blood supply of the heart itself. They are the first branch of the aorta, in particular of the ascending aorta. Remember that there are two coronary arteries, the left and the right coronary arteries. The right coronary artery will give rise to the subsynosal interventricular branch. On the other hand, the left coronary artery will give rise to the paraconal interventricular branch. This pattern is evident in horse and in pig. However, the pattern is different in ruminants and in dogs. Take a look at the left coronary artery. This will give rise to both paraconal and subsynosal interventricular branch. Animals also vary on the branches of the aortic arc. As a review, the aortic arc is one of the three parts of the aorta which include the ascending aorta, the aortic arc, and the descending aorta. At the aortic arc, two major arteries will arise, the brachiocephalic trunk and the left subclavian artery. This pattern is true in dogs and in pigs. In contrast to ruminants and in horses, only the brachiocephalic trunk arises from the aortic arc. The left subclavian artery arises from the brachiocephalic trunk. It is also good to recall that the brachiocephalic trunk will give rise to the common carotid artery which will branch into internal and external carotid artery. The external carotid artery will give rise to arteries supplying the facial structures while the internal carotid artery will give rise to arteries that will supply blood to the brain. The subclavian arteries, both the left and the right, will give rise to arteries that will supply blood to the thorax and the thoracic limb. We can also compare the origin of the common carotid artery. The common carotid arteries can arise either separately or via the bicarotid trunk. They arise separately in dogs and in cats as shown here. In contrast, in all hooved animals like horses, ruminants, and pigs, the common carotid arteries arise from a short common bicarotid trunk as shown here. We can also compare the branching of the left and right subclavian arteries. In total, there are five branches of the subclavian arteries. The vertebral artery, the costocervical artery, the deep cervical artery, the superficial cervical artery, and the internal thoracic artery. Here is another schematic illustration of the aortic arc of a dog with emphasis on the branching of the left subclavian artery. Note that in most animals, the branching of the left subclavian artery is the same with the right subclavian artery. However, this pattern or arrangement is not true in horse which we will discuss later. The main point of comparison for the subclavian artery is whether the vertebral and the costocervical arteries arise separately or not. To trace the branching, let us first locate the left subclavian artery. Here is the artery. It will directly give rise to the vertebral artery, then to the superficial cervical artery, and the internal thoracic artery. 
it will also directly gives rise to the costocervical artery. And this costocervical artery will give rise to the deep cervical artery. In total, there are four direct branches of the subclavian arteries and one indirect which is the deep cervical artery. It is also good to point that the vertebral and the costocervical arteries arise separately. We will compare the branching on the next slides. In ruminants, the vertebral artery arises from the costocervical artery. Here is the costocervical artery and here is the vertebral artery. This means that they only have three main branches and the rest are only sub-branches. Please recall that this is in contrast with the dog in which the vertebral artery arises separately from the costocervical artery. This branching pattern is the same with the pig. The branching is much more complicated in horse. This is because the branches of the left and the right subclavian arteries are different. The right subclavian artery are the same as what is presented in the dog with four branches. On the left, the deep cervical artery arises directly from the subclavian artery and not from the costocervical trunk, thus the left subclavian artery has all the five branches. To enumerate, here is the vertebral, the superficial cervical, the internal thoracic, the costocervical, and the deep cervical artery, all five directly branching from the left subclavian artery. As mentioned previously, only the major arterial system close to the heart shows most of the variation among the species. Variation can still be seen on the peripheral circulation as animals vary in the number of digits, for example. However, in general, the arterial and the venous system is the same for all. You are requested to review the branching of the arteries and veins in an animal body using a separate video prepared during the gross anatomy course. And that ends our discussion on the comparative anatomy of the cardiovascular system.